Okay, now we will perform the H-E-E-N-T exam. We'll first start with the head general appearance. Inspect the head for symmetry and shape. Then state normal cephalic. Then inspect the face for general appearance. Inspect the face for symmetry and obvious abnormalities. Then verbalize face is symmetrical without lesions. Hair distribution. Inspect hair for distribution. Then verbalize symmetrical hair distribution. Hair and scalp. Inspect and palpate hair and scalp for texture, infestations, scaling, and lesions. Then verbalize I am inspecting hair and scalp for texture, infestation, scaling, or lesions. Cranium and face. Palpate the cranium the face, the temporal artery for masses, tenderness, and injury. And verbalize there are no masses and no tenderness elicited. The temporal artery is non-tender. Paranasal sinuses. Palpate or percuss the frontal and maxillary sinuses. Parotid glands. Palpate the parotid gland for enlargement or tenderness. Then verbalize the parotid glands are non-palpable or parotid glands are without nodule or irregularity. TMJ. Palpate TMJ with motion for crepitus. Motor branch of cranial nerve 5. Palpate the muscles of mastication during jaw clench. Palpate both the temporal and masseter muscles separately. Cranial nerve 7. Inspect for symmetry of facial movements. Now we will perform the external eyes. Visual acuity, cranial nerve 2. Check visual acuity. Hold card 14 inches from eye. Exert no pressure on covered eye. Then verbalize visual acuity is 2020 for OD, OS, and OU. Visual fields. Evaluate visual fields by confrontation. Slowly bring fingers into patient's peripheral vision by wiggling your fingers. Have the patient point and say now with their hands. General appearance. Inspect brows, lashes, and lids. I am inspecting for symmetry, exophthalmus, lid lag, ptosis, periorbital discoloration, edema, and skin lesions. Lacrimal duct. Palpate lacrimal duct for regurgitation. Conjunctiva and sclera. Inspect bulbar and palpebral conjunctiva and sclera. Verbalize, I am inspecting for injection, icterus, lesions, edema, or foreign bodies. Extraocular movements, cranial nerve 3, 4, and 6. Move through position slowly enough to elicit nystagmus. Verbalize EOMs are full range without nystagmus. Convergence and accommodation. Inspect for convergence and accommodation. Have patient follow examiner's fingers from far to near and then focus on a distant object. Verbalize eyes converge and pupils accommodate to near vision. Position and alignment. Evaluate position and alignment of eyes. Shine pen light into eyes from a central location and inspect for light reflection on cornea. 
perform cover and uncover tests for each eye. Pupil reaction. Inspect for direct and consensual response for pupils to light for each eye. Iris and pupils. Inspect iris and pupils for symmetry and shape. Verbalize Pupils equal, round, and reactive to light and accommodation. Cornea and anterior chamber. Inspect cornea and anterior chamber depth. Verbalize no crescent shadows noted. End of external eye. Next is the fundoscopic exam. Technique. This is normally done in a darkened room. Use correct technique. Use right hand and eye to examine the patient's right eye and the left hand and eye to examine the patient's left eye. Have the patient focus on a far point. Brace a free hand against the patient's head or shoulder. Get as close as possible to the patient. Red reflex. Inspect for red reflex. Verbalize red reflex is present. Clarity. Inspect for clarity of cornea, anterior chamber, lens, and vitreous. Focus through the layers either by moving your head and scope or adjusting the diopters on the scope. Verbalize cornea, anterior chamber, lens, and vitreous are clear. Disc. Inspect the disc. Note the color, margins, and cup to disc ratio. Verbalize. Disc is pink. Margins are sharp. Cup to disc ratio is 1 to 2. Vessels. Inspect vessels for light reflex, AV ratio, and AV crossing. You must check all four quadrants. Verbalize. AV ratio is 2 to 3 without nicking or spasms. Fundus. Inspect fundus for hemorrhage, exudates, or other lesions. Verbalize. There are no hemorrhages or exudates. Macula. Inspect macula. Ask patient to look directly into the light. Verbalize. Macula is without lesions. Note positioning for left eye. Use left hand and eye to examine patient's left eye. End of Fundo exam. The next section is ears. We start with auricles. Inspect and palpate auricles bilateral for lesions or tenderness. Verbalize I am inspecting for lesions or tenderness. Tragus. Palpate tragus bilaterally for tenderness. Verbalize the tragus is non tender. Mastoid, inspection and palpation. Inspect bilaterally for discoloration and tenderness. Verbalize, I am inspecting for discoloration and there is no tenderness bilaterally. Otoscopic exam. This exam will be performed bilaterally. Your otoscopic technique, use appropriate technique. Hand braced against patient's head or face. Position otoscope at opening a canal, then peer through the lens to visualize entire canal. External auditory canal. Inspect condition of can canal. Verbalize. Canals are un unobstructed without erythema or edema. Tympanic membranes. Inspect TM for light reflex, landmarks, color, and general appearance. Verbalize. TM is pearly gray and translucent. Light reflex is in the anterior inferior quadrant and landmarks are undistorted. Middle ear. Inspect for presence of fluid. Verbalize there is no evidence of fluid in the middle ear. TM mobility. 
Inspect mobility with Valsalva or insufflation. Ask the patient to Valsalva, then verbalize TMs or mobile. Auditory acuity, renal nerve 8. Test auditory acuity. Use wi whisper test or rub fingers together. Next is Weber and Rene test. Use the 512 tuning fork. Hearing loss. Perform Weber test. Place base of tuning fork on top of patient's head or on forehead. Ask patient where he hears the sound. Perform Rene test. Place vibratory fork on mastoid bone. Hold there until patient no longer hears the tone. Then place the fork near the ear canal and ask if they hear it. Compare results to self. Verbalize results of test. Verbalize Weber is midline and air conduction is greater than bone conduction bilaterally. End of ear exam. The next exam is the nose. General appearance. Inspect for general appearance. Verbalize nose is midline without lesions. Patency. Test for nasal obstruction. Have patient occlude one nostril at a time. Cranial nerve one. Test cranial nerve one bilaterally. Occlude nostril and use two different scents if available. Do not use alcohol pads. Nasal speculum technique. Perform speculum exam with hand brace. Ask patient to tilt head back and examine with the speculum posteriorly then upward. Inspect the floor the middle turbinate, and the septum for discharge and condition of mucosa. Verbalize mucosa is pink and moist without lesions. End of nose exam. The next section is oral cavity. Lips and general appearance. Inspect the lips for colors, lesions, and inflammation. Verbalized lips are pink and moist without ulcers or cracking. Oral pharyngeal mucosa appearance. Inspect the oral pharyngeal mucosa for color, ulcers, white patches, or nodules. Verbalize I am inspecting the mucosa for color, ulcers, white patches, or nodules. Breath odor. Describe breath odor. Verbalize breath odor is non-offensive or fruity. Gingiva, inspect gingiva for lesions or inflammation. Verbalize, I am inspecting for lesions or inflammation. Teeth, inspect for condition and color. Percuss the teeth for tenderness. Tap the teeth with a tongue blade. Verbalize, teeth are in good repair, non-tender, with good oral hygiene. Cranial nerve 10, inspect midline rise of the uvula and the soft palate with phonation. Uvula, verbalize, uvula is midline and rises with phonation. Tonsils and appearance, inspect the tonsils for size, color, edema, and exudate. Verbalize, I am inspecting tonsils for size, color, and exudate. Gag reflex, cranial nerve 9 and 10. Inspect for the presence of gag reflex. Use the tongue blade to elicit a gag reflex. Cranial nerve 12. Inspect the tongue for midline position without, mid, without deviation. Have patient protrude tongue. Verbalize tongue as midline without deviation. Tongue. 
Inspect all surfaces of the tongue for color and lesion. Grasp the tip of the tongue with a square of gauze and inspect the sides of the tongue. Verbalize, I am inspecting for color, contour, and lesions. Bimanual exam. Perform bimanual exam of mouth and tongue, checking for masses or stones in Wharton's or Stenson's duct. Palpate the buccal mucosa and also palpate the gingiva. Verbalize there are no masses or areas of induration. The next section is the neck, trachea position. Inspect the trachea, trachea position and mobility. Have the patient swallow. Verbalize trachea is midline and mobile. Skin, inspect the skin for lesions, moles, discoloration, or scars. Verbalize there are no lesions, moles, or scars. Neck range of motion. Test active range of motion of the neck. Must it access all six positions. Lymph nodes. Palpate lymph nodes. Occipital, post-auricular, pre-auricular, submental, submandibular, tonsillar, anterior cervical chain, deep cervical chain, posterior cervical chain, and supraclavicular. Verbalize each group that has been palpated and state no lymphadenopathy noted. Thyroid. Anteriorly, have the patient swallow while noting contour and symmetry. Next, do the posterior approach. Place the fingers on the is isthmus of the thyroid and have the patient swallow to note location. Next, have patient look at knee. Slide your fingers between the SCM and the trachea and palpate the same side as they are looking at their knee. Have the patient swallow. Verbalize, thyroid is normal size, shape, and consistency without nodules or tenderness. Cranial nerve 11, test shoulder shrug and SCM strength against resistance. End of neck exam. Prepare patient, have patient undress to waist. Ensure female patient is draped for modesty. Respiration rate and effort. Determine respiration rate and effort. Respirations are calculated by palpating the radial pulse and observing the chest wall and abdomen for respirations for 30 seconds. Multiply by two. Then state respiration rates are so many per minute and unlabored. Take careful note of use of any accessory muscles or intercostal retractions of seen. Next, general inspection. Inspect anterior and posterior thorax. I am inspecting for symmetry of anatomy, contour, AP diameter, skin lesions, and central cyanosis. Chest expansion. Palpate for symmetry of posterior chest expansion during deep inspiration. Instruct patient to take a deep breath and verbalize. Chest expand symmetrically. Chest wall. Palpate posterior chest wall for masses and tenderness. 
tactile foramenis. Palpate posterior chest wall for tactile foramenis in five paired areas. Instruct patient to say 99 each time your ulnar sides of hands touch the surface. Verbalize tactile foramenis is equal in all fields. Percussion. Percuss the posterior chest walls for resonance in five paired areas. No dullness to percussion. CVA tenderness. Percuss over CVA bilaterally. Verbalize. No CVA tenderness noted bilaterally. Auscultation. Auscultate symmetric lung fields. Instruct patient to breathe through open mouth. Listen for full respiratory cycle with each placement of stethoscope. Locations include apex and just lateral to T2, 4, 6, 7, and two locations on the far lateral wall at T7 and T9. Verbalize no adventitious breath sounds heard. Chest wall. Palpate anterior chest wall for masses, crepitus, and tenderness. Verbalize anterior chest wall is without any masses, crepitus, or tenderness. Palpate four walls of axilla. Palpate anterior, posterior, lateral, and central axilla. Verbalize, there is no lymphadenopathy in the anterior, posterior, lateral, and central nodes after palpating both sides. Tactile fremitus. Palpate anterior chest wall for tactile fremitus in three paired areas. Instruct patient to say 99. Verbalize, tactile fremitus is equal in all fields. Percussion, percuss anterior lung fields for resonance in three paired areas. Verbalize, no dullness to percussion. Auscultation, auscultate symmetric lung fields including the apices, mid-axillary line, fourth and fifth intercostal space, and at least three other paired areas. Verbalize no adventitious breath sounds heard. This ends the respiratory exam. Cardiovascular. First prepare the patient. Check blood pressure and pulse rate. Check bl blood pressure in both arms and pulse in one arm while lying down. Pump cuff to 180 to 200, then slowly release. The first sound is systolic and the last sound is diastolic.
When counting pulse, check it for 15 seconds and multiply by 4. Again, while placing cuff, ensure to place cuff one inch above the antecubital crease. Again, pump it up to 180 to 200, and then slowly release. You will record and report both values in the arms. Okay, I'll have to stand up. Next, you will progress from lying to standing. It is important to observe the patient to look to see if they are symptomatic. You will wait a minimum of one to a maximum of three minutes between positions. By comparing lying to standing, this will evaluate for orthostatic hypotension. After checking the pulse and the blood pressure, verbalize your results. Cardiovascular in the sitting position. You will next auscultate the heart. You will use light pressure for the bell, then firm pressure for the diaphragm and name the valvular areas as you auscultate over them. Aortic. Pulmonic. Herb's point. Tricuspid. and mitral. Next, auscultate with inspiration over the left third intercostal area. Verbalize, I am listening for the physiologic split of S2. Okay, normal, okay, Next, auscultate with the diaphragm all the way up. over the third left intercostal all the space. Up. Have the patient okay, sit up, lean forward, and hold an expired breath. Verbalize, this is, there is no murmur of aortic regurgitation. Okay, sit back up. Next, 
have them Valsalva for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Auscultate with the diaphragm over the third left intercostal space. Have them Valsalva and bear down. Verbalize there is no murmur with Valsalva. Next, auscultate the carotids. Palpate the carotid, then use the bell. Verbalize, I am listening for carotid bruise. The next position is the supine position, 30 to 45 degree angle. Continue to stand at the right side of the exam table. Place the exam table in 30 to 45 degrees. You will estimate the height of the JVP, the jugular venous pulsations. Measure with the head turned to the left. Place it on the sternal angle, then measure across to the internal jugular vein for double pulsation. If unable to visualize, look at the external jugular vein. Then verbalize jugular pulsations visible at 0 to 4 centimeters above the sternal angle with the patient at 30 to 45 degrees. Next, inspect the precordium. Inspect the precordium preferably with tangential lighting and verbalize. I am looking for precordial heaves and the point of maximal impulse, the PMI. Next, palpate the precordium. Palpate with the ball of the right hand for lifts, heaves, and thrills at the four valve areas and locate the PMI. Verbalize there are no lifts, heaves, or thrills and PMI is non-displaced. Auscultate the heart. Auscultate the heart with the bell and diaphragm at the four valve positions and the left third intercostal space 